In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Lord, graciously give us your Holy Spirit. Guide us from within. Give us your light, your discernment. Incline our will toward yours. Kindle our heart with the fire of your Holy Spirit. And we ask you this through the powerful intercession of Our Lady, who is always present among us. Hey Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, good evening, everybody. Welcome back. And uh, we continue our journey with uh, book two of A Dark Night. We are in video uh, 32, right now, still in chapter 13 and toward the end of it. But I think one of you have a question, so please go ahead. Yes, hi, Jean. Hi, Martin. Last lesson, um, you spoke about uh philosophy and how we how our mind functions naturally and after having been exposed to certain thinking um and i was wondering you know for those maybe watching these classes if you if someone say recognizes that maybe they're under the influence of maybe modern thinking or they haven't been exposed to aristotle or metaphysics or St. thomas aquinas and they feel this as a lack what would you you know what would you Tell them, I mean, how could, if they were interested and open to, to make make up that lacoon, let's just say, uh, what would you suggest, you know, for us to study or, or do in order to apprehend better, as you said? Yeah. Thank you for your question, uh, Marty. Um, yeah, it is a practical question, then what, what to do? Um, as I said in the previous uh, lesson, um, you have sometimes even the teaching um, of Thomas Aquinas or Aristotle, and it is rather offered in a more under history uh, perspective. Um, hence the need to find somebody, I'm almost tempted to say somebody who sees and who can help you uh, when you open your eyes to see also or to be to be aware of um, how you do you naturally see or look at things. Um, it's it's uh, to a certain extent a bit difficult uh, to answer the question. Um, there are uh, some faculties or places or institute which uh, still teach uh, Aristotle and the uh, St. Thomas Aquinas philosophy. When I mentioned Thomas Aquinas here, I'm talking about his philosophy, not his uh, theology. Um, I, I, I know the brothers of St. Jean, the uh, French foundation. Um, they uh, usually uh, teach um, this type of philosophy. You have different Dominican places uh, where they teach uh, Thomas Aquinas uh, philosophy. So you're bound to find sooner or later somebody who, who I would say, and forgive me the, um, the, the expression, somebody who sees philosophically, who sees the, 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 the uh, being. Um, what can one read? Um, I know a book uh i it's written in french i don't know the quality of the translation but it's written by jacques maritain the french uh, catholic uh, philosopher and uh, it's uh, seven let seven lessons on the being um i can maybe try to find it and put the link um uh, under this video uh, I remember till today that I don't remember if it's the third or the fourth lesson. Um, it's like, wow. Um, so it's a book, you read it. Um, and I think he, he um, in this chapter, 
uh, is or lesson because there are seven lessons on on, on being. Uh, I have it in French, so I, there's no no use at all to show it to you right now. But I'll try my best at least to give one or two links under the video uh, at the end. Um, yeah, I, I remember till today the lesson. Um, I don't remember which number. I can I can check it. Number four, I think. Splendid, splendid. Where he describes the experience. Um, so I think it's both sides. Studying on one hand, one can read. And I'm talking about Maritain here. Maritain can uh, can help uh, in this book. So it's not a big book. And uh, also meeting people. Um, Dominicans usually are uh, supposed to. They do. This is their mission in in, in the church. Uh, but also uh, the brothers of Saint Jean. Uh, I don't know if whoever is watching us um, can. Find them. I know where they are, but you can you can uh, uh, search for them. Uh, so yeah, um, there are some institutes. I know one or of these institutes in the south of France, but this is for the French-speaking people. Um, I'm sure in the United States uh, you have uh, such people who teach um, this uh, type of um, philosophy and uh, and way. So I don't know if I answered your your your, your question. Um, yeah, um, there is a book I think written by Father Marie Dominique Philippe. Um, um, I don't know if it has been translated, but probably yes. But you know, <clears throat> um, a letter to a friend or something like that um, in, in French. Uh, but I guess it has been translated, but I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure. Uh, one can read some um, books. It's difficult if you read directly Thomas Aquinas and his works in philosophy, I'm not sure one will perceive the core of what I'm trying to say. These are There are two courses essentially. Uh, one explains uh, the being and one explains the operation of the mind. Um, these, are these two courses complement each other. They go together, usually in a classic, old fashioned classic, um, teaching of, of philosophy, very, I think, very rare today, but uh, yeah, maybe some faculties in Rome continue to do that, I guess, I guess they do. Um, so yeah, these two courses, uh, the being uh, and the theory of knowledge, the theory of knowledge according to Aristotle and Thomas Aquinas, uh, metaphysics, sorry, I said being, uh, metaphysics, if you study metaphysics and if you study the theory of, of uh, knowledge, uh, I think it's called like that in, in English uh, in French is la théorie de la connaissance. Uh, if you do these courses, I think if it, they are done properly, then something should occur uh, in you and you could start to, to see. But I think also there are some books, um, I don't remember now the title, um, from Jacques Maritain, where he addresses, underlines the issue, this uh, big problematic um, uh, point in, in philosophy, how all modern philosophies are influenced by um, Immanuel Kant's vision and understanding of, um, of how the mind works. And uh, I, th I think it's called the, the three Re reformators. Um, he talks about Freud, Kant, and somebody else, but I need to confirm that. I, I will put the link under this uh, video once I find uh, the book. Um, I'm sure there is a, an English translation to it, maybe even accessible for free. Um, if I have such thing, I will, I will put the link also, okay? Thank you, thank you for, for your, your, your question. So let us um, go back to um, studying St. John of the Cross uh, and uh, we take it exactly where we left it um, in the uh, previous lesson. So we are here video number 32 and this is the paragraph uh, we were reading and I was underlining the importance of the uh, divine uh, mode. I think, yeah, I stopped here if I'm not wrong. Uh, becomes divine through. No, I think I, I stopped. I just stopped here. 
So this is nothing else but his illumination of the mind with supernatural light so that it is no more human mind. I was explaining the last time, the human mind, it's still spiritual, but functioning in a human way, but becomes divine, so divine mode. So let us see now what he says here. In the same way, the will, so he was talking about the mind, huh? you see, as I put it here in, in green, now he talks about the will, the three main faculties. Um, the will is informed with divine love so that it is a will that is now no less than divine. So you have human modality and divine modality or mode of functioning. Uh, applied in spiritual life, both. Both are, uh, are modes of functioning in spiritual life. But one is imperfect, very still, I would say, rampant, if you want, crawling. And the other one flies, it's taken by God, it is divine. So this is a fundamental teaching in St. John of the Cross. I remember um, having discovered toward the end uh, what uh, Father Louis, uh, the Carmelite, uh, French Carmelite, uh, uh, like a series of five uh, conferences or talks on the human and divine modality. Um, and unfortunately, uh, it's in French, but... Um, it's very interesting to see that this um, difference between the two modalities caught his attention and he studied it in, in uh, I think, three or four different places in the works of John of the Cross, trying to see what he says about it. And each time he enriches it uh, with something more because the context is, is different. So please remember that. Hmm? Um, otherwise, what's the point of John of the Cross if we don't understand that um, being spiritual is not enough? Uh, we have the modality also counts, the subject, how we address things. A <clears throat> uh, will that is now, I, I hope it's clear now when I say subject and object. The object is divine, is God, but the way we look at the object, the way we uh, love the object, the, the way we uh, uh, interact with the object can be either uh, uh, human or, or divine. So that it's a will that is now no less than divine, nor does it love otherwise than divinely. For it is made and united in one with the divine will and love. Some people are interested by the divine will story. Um, so, so too is it with the memory. So he talked about the, uh, the mind. Now here the will and now it's the memory. The three main faculties, rational faculties. And likewise, the affections and desires are so, so. So it is the same also for the memory. And then he moves then to the affections and desires. So you have the three faculties of the soul plus the affections and desires. So the affections and desires are all changed and converted divinely according to God. According to God means according to God's way. So how God acts. So divinely means the way, God's way. According to God means God's way. And thus, this soul will now be a soul of heaven. Heavenly and more divine than human. Y así, esta, esta alma será ya alma del cielo, celestial y más divina que humana. Forgive me for quoting the Spanish because it's, it's good to hear celestial, alma del cielo, etc. All this, as we have been saying, and be, so it's not that the person is, is like absent completely from our, li our life here on earth, etc. It's the functioning that is different. The person has apparently a normal life. This is very important to understand where we are heading. What is union with God? What are the further steps and so forth? Are we dealing with a person who, who is are completely, uh, uh, you know, in, a, in another place and uh, uh, taken by such things and so forth. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. It's the functioning that changes, which changes inside of us. Not other, other things necessarily. 
all this as we have because i'm saying this because the words heaven heavenly soul of heaven etc can you know you have uh, you can fantasize spiritual you know and have an image of of a person who who is uh, behaving in a certain way uh, while uh, he's not saying that he's talking about the the function all this as we have been saying and because of what we have said god continues to do and to work in the soul by means of this night illumining and enkindling it divinely with yearnings for god alone and for nothing else whatsoever now let me reread this paragraph because there are, it's it's packed with um, interesting things um, all this as we have been saying and because of what we have said god continues to do and to work in the soul so you remember as i said in the previous lesson Whenever you read something and you find that it's very far from wh where you think you are and it's very difficult to reach and you can't achieve it by, by your own strength, remember that the key of this book is this sentence. God continues to do and to work in the soul by means of this night. It is God who is the main actor in this night. He is the one who changes us. Who is the one who transforms us. He is the one who uh, strips us and uh, clothes, clothes us and, and, and so forth. He is the one who makes us move from the human way of dealing with everything, with him and, and other things, to the divine way. It is him. This is a direct personal intervention of God in the life of a human being. This is an event in our life. You have a before and you have an after. <clears throat> Illumining and enkindling it uh, divinely with yearnings for God alone. Mm. Remember this, uh, this interesting extra word here. Uh, God alone. That is, this is the key. What is God achieving? He's removing everything. And he wants himself only. He's very jealous, no, as uh, we have in the Old Testament. Not in a human way jealous, but jealous in a divine way, which means who can compete with me? Nobody should compete with me. I am God. I am the only God. Yeah. Uh, listen, Israel, I am God, or you don't have other gods. So God alone is the object of my, lo of my love. Uh, remember the first commandment, how drastic it is. No? You shall love God with all your being, with all your strength. It's not half of your heart will go this, the, to, to God and the other half goes to human uh, um, uh, dealings. No, all your God, all your heart. So you see, there is a, there is a, a, a tough, uh, uh, radical uh, uh, aspect in, 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 uh, in God, in the revelation of God, the revelation of, of himself, when he reveals himself to us. You know, it's something uh, powerful and unique. And you sense a little bit, a, lo a, little bit, a lot of this in the Old Testament. Uh, some people don't like the Old, Old Testament, they reject the Old Testament, they don't know how to deal with it, etc. But you, need, you see this aspect of the manifestation of the holiness of God is very much present in the Pentateuch, in the Torah, in the five first uh, books of, of, of the Bible. Um, so we can learn from it. Yeah? We can learn from it how God is God is God. Nothing else is God. God is God. And God wants to have all the place in us. So you see, this is this expression here. God alone. So all the work of God in us, this new intervention, is meant to achieve that, to have God only reigning in us. No, The kingdom of God is closed, no? uh, is nearby. Uh, the kingdom of God is started already. The kingdom of God. Jesus talks a lot about the kingdom of God, especially in the Gospel of St. Matthew. God is king, but God only. Now you might say, but and then what about the others? Well, he is the one who makes you love the others. He is the one who teaches you how to love and know the others. You see, his way, not your way. So uh, giving everything to God doesn't mean that we lose our humanity or we lose our connections with our, our brothers and sisters. On the contrary, we have a better connection a better understanding, a better way to deal with our brothers and sisters. And we enter in the work of redemption. We enter in the work of redemption. It's not just friendship. It's not just community. It's the necessity of salvation of our world today. That's a completely different deal. Okay? So God alone means better work, better life on earth, superior 
divide. And it's not making us um, distant from uh, the earthly life. On the contrary, the movement of God is a descent, says St. Augustine. He talks about the weight of charity. St. Therese of the Child Jesus talks about descent. God finds uh, um, a greater joy in a lower place to fill. God finds a greater joy if he finds a lower, lower place to, to, to enter in or to, to fill. You see, so the movement of God is a descent to fill. So, and he finds his joy and happiness there. So, <clears throat> divine means to be brought by this weight of God down, not, not up as sometimes we think. For which cause the soul, for which cause, uh, all what he said above, the soul then very justly and reasonably adds the third line to the song. Um, which says, Oh, happy chance, I went forth without being observed. Uh, you remember when I commented on chance, uh, um, I don't like chance, uh, I, I prefer uh, adventure. Hmm? Uh, in, in Spanish, is ventura, uh, odichosa, odichosa ventura. Hmm. Uh, yeah, could be chance, but it's adventure or. or, or discovery or uh, fate mm, uh, it's a little bit of, of of all this and certainly more i went forth without being observed so we enter now in chapter 14 so we are moving on a little bit uh we still have plenty of chapters um i think around 11 more chapters some of them are just one paragraph so don't worry uh wherein are this is the title of the paragraph wherein uh, are set down and explain the last three lines of the first stanza the last three lines of the first stanza. This happy chance or this glad uh, adventure or achievement was the reason for which the soul speaks in the next lines as follows. I went forth to come out. I came out. Sali. Salir. I went forth without being observed. Salí sin ser notada. Salí sin ser notada. I went out and nobody noticed me. Nobody noticed that I went out. Um, my house being now at rest. Ya mi casa sosegada. My, ha my house now being at rest. <clears throat> so let us see what it means. Or what he means by that. It takes the metaphor, this, um, the image he's using here, it takes the metaphor from one who in order to better, uh, sorry, in order the better to accomplish something, leaves his house by night and in the dark when those that are in the house are now at rest so that none may hinder him. Remember, sin ser notada is, is key, uh, uh, which is without being uh, observed or nobody noticed me. Hmm? Uh, it's very important. What does it mean? Um, so let us see. Uh, it's very beautiful, by the way, um, the explanation of the, the verses. For the soul had to go forth, to escape, to go out, to exit, to perform a deed so heroic and so rare, namely to become united with its divine beloved. And it had to leave its house because the beloved is not found save alone and without in solitude. Let us see together this interesting sentence <clears throat> now this soul had to go forth to perform a deed so heroic and so rare. it's very interesting here you know spiritual life is so heroic and so rare 
Teresa of Avila would say that um, Teresa, um, that spiritual life requires a courage greater than the courage you need when you are at war. Spiritual life requires courage to fight the warfare, the spiritual warfare, greater than the courage needed in the war for the, from the soldiers. And here it's very interesting that he de describes the achievement of spiritual life, which is to come out. This is a huge achievement to be able to come out. A deed so heroic and so rare. Uh, the Spanish the connection, the, the translation is correct. Tan heroico y tan raro. Namely, to become united with its divine beloved. Que era unirse con su amado divino. Afuera. Afuera. To, to be um, united outside. Not inside. Because if you are inside, they will notice you. But now you are going outside, so nobody will see you. Uh, the outside is not... Uh... Yeah, I can't, I can't see the, the, out, the uh, outside. Is it here, United? Well, this soul had to go forth to perform a deed so heroic. And so, you see, there's something lacking here. Um, in the Spanish, it says... Tan heroico, tan raro, que era unirse con su amado divino afuera. Yeah, it's it's here, and it had to leave its house. So where did they, they unite? It's outside. So now the explanation, why outside? Because the beloved is not found. Porque el amado no se haya. Save alone. Save alone. And without in solitude three three uh, qualities um alone is correct solo without i don't know maybe it's old english maybe it's me i don't know but in spanish is afuera afuera means out, outside it does it means outside it's me it means outside without yes it's me so you see I'm, i do apologize for uh, for people of uh, english mother tongue um so Alone, without, in solitude. In solitude. Uh, en la soledad. Remember, I did mention that uh, some time ago, that the word solitude in St. John of the Cross, I did mention that, and I, and I give you the, the number of the stanza. It's the fifth from the end of the uh, spiritual canticle when he explains solitude. But he explains solitude in a completely different way. As I said before, solitude for the monastic life is, uh, you know, you need to be alone in your cell and uh, you need to pray and, uh, and, and, and try not to find consolation in uh, meeting other people and so forth. So the solitude, because solitude, then you pray, then you meet God. You are alone with the alone God. That's the normal understanding of solitude. But now he, 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 he shows us a different dimension of solitude. Solitude is not only being physically alone, or it's not first being physically alone. Solitude is being alone from all that is not God. So I'm only with him. Inside of me, I'm out of myself. I'm not with all the creatures. Uh, I am in solitude, which means I'm only with him inside of me. I came out and I'm with him. Okay? So you see how alone, without, and solitude, they, they are almost uh, synonymous also. And purity, solitude are equivalent in center of the cross. Poverty, desnudez are all the four of them. They, are, they mean the same thing. You see how when you 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 um, you get closer to the to the peak or the top or the summit of of uh, uh, spiritual life, you find that uh, different words, which usually would mean different things, in fact, they are saying the same thing as we just. So, it was for this reason that the bride desired to find him alone. The, when he says the bride, he's talking about the Song of Songs of Solomon. This short book, eight chapters, um, uh, you can read it. Uh, it's, it's, it's fundamental in Carmelite uh, life. Um, especially the nuns, they appreciate uh, that book um, a lot. And as you can see, uh, John of the Cross in 
uh, another work of his, uh, the spiritual canticle, will be very much inspired by this sort of story between the soul searching for the who will become the bride, searching for the groom, and so forth. Um, it's um, I would say this is the world inside of Carmel. This is your your world, especially the the feminine Carmel. It was for this reason that the bride desired to find him alone. The bride is the bride in the uh, um, um, Song of Songs of Solomon saying, who would give thee to me? You see, she comes out. She, she's searching for him. Her desire is him. She doesn't have any other desire. So who would give thee to me, my brother, that I might find thee alone without, outside, and that my love might be communicated to thee? that my love might be communicated to thee. Song of Songs 8.1. It is needful for the enamored, enamored being in love, if you want, and the soul who is in love, in love with, with God, with Jesus, in order to attain to its desired end, union with him, to find him fully, to do likewise, to do the same, to do the same as who? As the bride, hmm? and the bride in the Song of Songs. Going forth at night. And what does night mean? The uh, faculties, the affections, and so forth are calm now. They are not controlling me, and they don't have an object. So uh, they are in dark, and I'm going out. Hmm. Going forth at night, when all the domestics, the faculties. Hmm. You see how... Uh, many people here are a description of just faculties. You see how, how we can read sometimes the Old Testament. Uh, people can allude to faculties. Uh, when all the domestics in its house are sleeping and at rest. Domestics are the faculties. That is, when the law operations, remember, human to divine, law to divine or high. Law operations, passions and desires of the soul are uh, because it is night sleeping and at rest so all the operations all the way of functioning the natural way of functioning or the the natural way of dealing with spiritual life stops it will be replaced by the divine way so she's going out operation operations passions and desires of the soul who are the people of the household now I added this bit when these are awake, uh, because I think it's no. Sorry, I he uh, he put it and I removed it. So the translator uh, Alison Pierce kept when they are awake, which means the household. They invariably hinder the soul from seeking its good, since they are opposed to its. It's going forth in freedom. Okay, so it's just added to to make to uh, um, to cut the sentences here with a full stop and start a new sentence. In Spanish, it's all one sentence. It's long. All this in 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 the Spanish is one sentence. So you know you try to make it a bit more bearable. So he had to add this again. They invar invariably hinder the soul. So if the operations, passions, and desires are still awake, they're not darkened, they're not emptied, they hinder the soul from seeking its good, its good being Jesus himself. These are they of whom our Savior speaks in the gospel, saying that they are the enemies of man. The enemies of man come and do this and that. Matthew 10 36 and thus it would be meet that their operations operations of what of uh, passions desires and faculties and motion should be put to sleep in this night better said if you prefer to stop the human way of doing and to accept to move on to a divine way of doing things so put asleep means it's not working with its own operation or according to its own operation. Now it's supposed to work with the divine operation. To the end that they may not hinder the soul from attaining the supernatural blessings. 
Now here, it's, uh, I did it in the below, but I forgot to do this one. It's uh, bienes. Bienes is goods. Um, I don't want to be too fussy, but uh, I'm just showing you the, the Spanish. It's not blessings, gracias, or bendiciones, but it's bienes, the goods, the supernatural goods. Um, and it's often translated blessing, as you can see here also below, I put uh, bienes and here also blessing. So you read it the way you want. I'm just telling you how it is in the Spanish. Uh, so that this end may not hinder the soul from attaining the supernatural goods. What are what is um, the goods of what the goods or the blessings of the union of love of God, la la union de amor de Dios. So you see, union of love. He doesn't use here spiritual marriage. He uses union of love. Slight variation but it's the same contents. So it's interesting here. You need to, we need to learn when we read. Uh, the author here doesn't talk about spiritual marriage. He prefers to use the union of love. So remember that expression. The union of love of God, for while these are alive and active, this cannot be. You can't have two functionings in the same place. It's either the human functioning or God's functioning. Either I am inside of them, I'm moving them, or I'm outside seeking him and being united to him. For all their work and their natural motions, still with a the spiritual object, but it's a natural motion, hinder rather than aid the soul's reception of spiritual goods. Bienes, goods. Of the union of love, inasmuch as all natural ability is impotent or Im impotent or important. Impotent? Sorry. Uh, impotent with respect to the supernatural blessings or supernatural goods that God, by means of his own infusion, bestows upon the soul passively, secretly, in silence. So let us read again this sentence so all the works of the faculties desires and so forth and their natural motion hinder the soul's reception of the spiritual uh, blessings of the union with love why all natural ability why it hinders it's un incapable hmm? not it it can't hmm? It, it is too short, uh, important, imp, important. Uh, in, in Spanish, it says corta. You can see it here on the right. Eh? Se queda corta, toda habilidad. It's, it's, it's too short. It's, it cannot reach out. It's um, limited. With respect to the supernatural blessings that God, by means of his own infusion, so if there is union with love, uh, or leading to uh, steps leading to union with love, God bestows, um, would like to bestow uh, uh, things, but he can't. Why? Because they are working. The faculties are working and using their own way. So you see how we can hinder God's work. Uh, St. Therese of the Child Jesus uses a very simple ex uh, a couple uh, of, of a pair of, of, of expressions, no? Uh, uh, trust, uh, um, total trust, and abandonment, um, and trusting, uh, abandonment. Uh, le, la confiance et l'abandon. Uh, um, but when you think about it, what are you doing? If you abandon yourself, you allow God, you want God to work, not you. So it's not you who is leading your spiritual life. You are more um, following God. You're not totally passive, but you're following God. You allow him to, to, to lead and to, to direct and to move. So this abandoning is uh, if, if I don't do it and if I interfere in God's action, then, of course, um, I hinder uh, uh, the reception of God, the reception of the goods, a reception of union with God is hindered. Why? Because I am the one who is leading instead of him. So he, he stops giving himself. 
Uh, remember also in the uh, contemplative prayer, in the prayer of the heart, I offer myself, but sometimes I want to interfere. I want to do this. I want to do that. So the offering of myself, I, I take it back again because I, I go back into being in control of my, my own soul. You see? So he cannot work in this case. Uh, he cannot work. And you could see it practically right now when you practice contemplative prayer. Imagine you offer yourself, no? Jesus, I, I give, uh, Mary, I give you my heart and you, you do whatever you want, etc. And then I stay there. But then I would like to do something. You know, I would like to interfere. Uh, so my heart who has been given already. So it's good, it's passive, secret and in silence. I don't have access to what she's doing, what God is doing, what the Holy Spirit is doing. So when I start to act again, it's as if I'm bringing back my heart. I am back into control, uh, into moving things and so forth. So God stops working. It's, it's, it's very physical, the change so to speak physical it's real it's occurring inside of us if i interfere he stops why because he respects my freedom this is a practical example but of course here it's uh, you need to sort of uh, apply it to to the whole day and the whole activities <clears throat> now by means of his own infusion por solo infusion suya bestows upon the soul this is he's describing god's work in us now you see the three words here passiva y secretamente y uh, en el silencio they are very close to each other passively means what passively means allowing god to work letting him work abandoning him leaving it in his hands no when you leave things in his hands, it's still an act, but it's a receptive act. I prefer receptive rather than passive, but this is what he means by passive in, in Spanish. No, So you allow him to work. Secretly means you don't have access to what he's doing because he's doing, he's acting deep in, in you. Secretly, it is secret to the to my action, to my knowledge, to my natural way of doing things, natural in spiritual life. Okay, so it is secret means it's not known to me. You understand here the the, the nuance. Huh? His work is 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 described as secretly. Why? Because I don't know it. I know what I know, I know what I can grasp, but I don't know what he's doing. So what he's doing is distant from me, is different, and I don't know it. So it is secretly. So not only secretly means he's he's working in a different place from where I am, which is the spirit of the deepest part of my being, but secretly also, uh, I think, means that the divine modality or divine way of acting, which is his, I don't have any knowledge of it comes from him and goes back to him the origin is god and the end is god i can't grasp the beginning and the end because it's god himself so it's secret silence what is silence silence is the absence of action of my uh, faculties wow silence here means what means my faculties are silent which means they're not interfering so it's not silence, silence like nobody is talking, I can't hear anything, uh, it's, it's all silent. No, silence is the silence of my action, my human mode of action. I hope you see. You see how rich it is. Uh, this one paragraph uh, is full of words and, and uh, we don't always... Um, understand what their place why he's using them what what he's trying to say because uh, spiritual life is always something deeper that is happening and uh, we need to understand that it's not physical things it's something uh, um, invisible that he's describing which is a little bit what we said in the beginning of last um, uh, lesson which is this capacity to access a place uh, that um, our 
uh, way of doing things usually is 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 un is, is not is, is definitely not capable. Uh, you need not only faith, but you need also this this sort of functioning uh, of uh, the mind. <clears throat> And thus, it is needful that all the faculties should receive this infusion, and that in order to receive it, they should remain passive. You have to make yourself passive. Seayan, seayan, which means to make yourself. Seayan passivamente. So, I, I the act of abandoning myself is is a very important and and fundamental way to uh collaborate with god's action i am at my place i, I am at my place i'm not interfering i'm just uh, be with him so it's not total passivity where i stay there and say okay lord you do it the way you want no i'm putting myself in his hands and allowing him to work it's very different so they uh, should remain uh, passive and not interpose their own base acts. Base mean law. Hmm? The law, the modality, the human modality is very low for St. John of the Cross, no? Baja. Hmm? And vile, hmm? vil in, in Spanish, vile inclinations. It was a happy chance or a good, good fortune or a good uh, blessed uh, adventure for the soul this is the verse itself, um, that on this night, which is God's action, night is God's action, should put to sleep all the domestics in its house. So this is the result of God's action in us. If we allow him to work with this new, uh, deeper uh, intervention or contemplation uh, uh, of God, who is changing our life, from within, if we allow him to do that, this is a glad opportunity or a happy chance or a blessed adventure uh, because he is making all the faculties, uh, he puts he's put them to sleep. Mm -hmm. All the faculties, passions, affections and desires which live in the soul both sensually and spiritually. Now, uh, a little parenthesis here, if you don't mind, um, for people who uh, are familiar with the um, uh, Oriental, uh, I mean, Eastern churches, uh, the Greek fathers and the Byzantine tradition of Hezekiah, Hezekiah, which comes actually from the Greek philosophy, but has been Christianized, if you want. Uh, I know some people don't don't like it, um, you know, but it's part of the other lung, as uh, Pope John Paul II says. We need to to learn to breathe with both lungs, east and west. Uh, and when we says east and west, it's east and west of the Mediterranean, by the way. It's the first uh, millennium, and the prolongation after that, of course, in the second millennium. Um, <clears throat> the um, the monastic spirituality of the Byzantine uh, world it has uh, as, as a core doctrine, the doctrine of hesychasm, hesychasm. Um, Hezekiah is this uh, calmness or absence of uh, passions, uh, etc., uh, which the monk is seeking to achieve. And it's very interesting because the words are very close here in this paragraph. I'm not saying that John of the Cross read about it. Uh, I don't think so. We don't have uh, traces of that. But in this passage here, you sense that the closeness between the two spiritualities. And here, the accusation sometimes, I'm not saying that people do it often, but sometimes the Western uh, the theology and um, uh, Western side, if you want, of the church sometimes um, is a bit harsh toward hesychasm by saying, well, this is very much or too much influenced by the Greek philosophy and so forth, which is uh, non-Christian or before being Christianized, if, if you want. Uh, I beg to differ. I think that um, if it, it was adopted but with all the um, 
the work of the grace of God and the Holy Spirit um, uh, in us, uh, it, if it was adopted uh, and was lived for centuries by the monastic uh, Byzantine uh, tradition, uh, I think it's, it's absolutely pertinent. Uh, there's nothing wrong. And I find that these two passages, the, 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 the doctrine on, on hesychasm, which is the necessity for the monk to achieve this sort of uh, calmness of the passions and desires and so forth, it doesn't mean the emptiness, the Buddhist emptiness or, or any other spirit, um, um, Far Eastern uh, spirituality uh, emptiness. No, it's not emptiness. It's uh, being led by God. And I think that the, into, the um, explanation offered by St. John of the Cross sheds also a light uh, on hesychasm, a lovely light, and, and shows how, uh, in fact, some very often, in, in fact, we're, we are taught, we're speaking the same language. Uh, different traditions, different directions, but the core of it uh, is the same. If it is understood properly, if it is understood properly, both Hesychasm and the um, Saint, Saint John of the Cross uh, teaching. You see, so it's not the emptiness, um, the, the Buddhist emptiness, but it's the um, allowing God to work. So God calms down all the passions and so forth, and now he starts to be the one who reigns um, uh, in us. Let us continue. So, yeah, um, children, so both sensually, yeah, uh, sleep, you know, to put them to sleep. Uh, hesychasm, this is where uh, one could see it. For thus it went forth without being observed. Remember, mm, uh, Nobody notices this uh, um, going out. Um, that is without being hindered by these affections. So you see, it's not total emptiness. The affections are there, but there is no hindrance made by them because they're not active. They are receptive. They have been purified. They have been detached from their, um, their objects of, of attachment. And now they are not controlling, it's God who is controlling. For they were put to sleep and mortified, <clears throat> translation is correct, in this night, in the darkness of which they were left, that they might not notice or feel anything after their own law and natural manner, manner in Spanish, modo, the way, and might thus be unable to hinder the soul from going uh, forth from itself and from the house of its sensuality. Not only the sensuality, but also the spiritual one, he could have added um, here. And thus, only could the soul attain to the spiritual union of perfect love of, of God. Now, uh, just a quick um, observation here on the expression mortified. Uh, some people stopped using uh, mortified. And you see how mortification in the classic monastic uh, understanding of it, which is uh, making an effort of uh, uh, fasting and uh, controlling the senses and controlling our uh, all our appetites and so forth, all sorts of appetites and so forth. So we call it the mortification, the mortification of the sense, the mortification of the eye, mortification of um, the, the, uh, the, the, the taste uh, and, and, and so forth. You see how here the notion of mortification is, um, 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 is very different because under the action of God, you have the mortification that you produce. Like we talked, uh, I think, uh, maybe last lesson or this lesson about humility, for instance, as an example. You have my effort to be humble, but then you have God's work who, who, who will then in, generate in us a, a completely different uh, humility coming from him. And here applies the same thing here. Mortification is the effort we produce, asceticism. Uh, we produce an effort. We have to produce it. This is necessary. We saw that in the Ascent of Mount Carmel book one. You can go back to that um, part of the, uh, the course. But also the intervention of God, the mortification, if you want, now has is transfigured. It has completely a different meaning 
in the sense that it's God who puts to sleep. It's God who is intervening. It's God who is uh, um, um, having the control, if you want, or, or doing the job. You see? Okay? Now, um, I'll try to do this and finish. I, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm taking too much um, time. Um, oh, oh, how happy a chance, hmm? adventure or fate. Um, is this for the soul which can free itself from the house of sensuality? But it's not only sensuality, it's also the other house. None can understand it unless, as it seems to me, it be the soul. <coughs> Sorry. It be the soul that has experienced it. For such a soul will be clearly, uh, will see clearly how wretched was the servitude in which it lay and to how many miseries it was subject when it was at the mercy of its faculties and desires you see so you ask me uh, marty uh, can one see can one notice yes you see how wretched was the servitude in which our own miseries uh, were subject to no? uh, because of the, uh, our faculties and desires they were leading and not and not God. A big change. And we'll uh, know how the life of the spirit, translation is correct, uh, is true liberty and wealth. Translation is correct. Bringing with it inestimable goods, bienes. Some of these we shall point out as we proceed in the following stanzas, wherein it will be seen more clearly that uh, what good reason the soul has to sing of the happy chance uh, of its passage from this dreadful night, passage from this dreadful night, which has been described above. Okay, so, oh, happy chance. Quan dichosa ventura. So, um, uh, let us uh, thank the Lord for the grace of uh, this teaching and uh, opening our eyes to what he would like to realize, realize in our life. Please, Lord, uh, we offer ourselves to you, surrender ourselves to you, to your work. Help us and show us how at every minute uh, we... I can allow you to lead and not us, allow you to show us and not ourselves to try to find solutions, etc. And uh, show us how to be in tune with uh, your uh, Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you very much for your attention and until next time.